You have heard a lot of our guests' uh, ramblings sometimes around PAX Unplugged on the internet when there was a moment of weakness and personality shining through the internet. You have seen him perform as a questionably attractive priest in Call the Abyss. You have seen him run a very questionable group of near dwells involving Hades and Monster Hearts. You have seen him play as a very overly toxic positive Camp Counselor in Camp Half-Blood. We are talking to the one, the only, Bully Table Goth. Bully Table Goth, how are you doing this evening? I am physically doing terribly. Mm -hmm. Good. Mentally, also not good. How about you? Uh, the, I'm just glad that the concoction worked. Uh, and uh, so that little cocktail, that little rumbling that you're feeling, that uncomfortableness, that was from our previous guest, Vin Vox VA. Vin wanted you to wanted us to let you know that uh, it was their fault all along. The Vin curse. Yeah, I the curse Vin curse. Curse you. Classic. I curse you. I can yep. feel it. Thanks, Vin. Yeah, totally, totally. They're always happy to oh, be yeah. there and happy to help. How you doing? Other than uh, other than you know. The fucking, uh, your sickness. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking all the way. If you're doing great, then I'm doing great. That's all I needed. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, uh, have you ever watched this show before? Or do you know the basic outline of it? Yes, I have. I do. Perfect. Okay, good, good, good. Typically, I have my, uh, my fellow host here, Derek, with me. But Derek is off doing much more cooler and important things than interrogating you on the internet. Uh, so, yeah. His absence is noted. Mm -hmm. The feud has begun. Mm -hmm. He said he had quite a bit of questions for you, and you were going to get what was yours, is what he told me to tell you. Uh, I don't think y'all two have ever met before, but he seemed to be very aware of you. So nothing to be concerned. Uh, never have, never will. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, I have uh, a myriad of questions that I've written myself, but we also have a lot of questions from our Patreon chat that I'm going to be asking them. Holy hell, Duval, <laughs> thank you for the gifted 10 tier 1 subs to the community. You are a... Th that's, you know... Uh, D is for Duval. Uh, perfect, perfect. Duval can ask any question that he wants to know at any <laughs> point during this whole entire interview. The only person that's allowed to derail this is Duval. Uh, amazing. Thank you so Duval's much. the best. A, um, a, a shining beacon of everything I am not in the community. It's amazing. I exist, um, and just so Duval can thrive. Way to flex. Way to flex. Way to flex, Duval. I appreciate it. Uh, speaking of the antithesis of Duval, let's dive into these questions here, homie. Uh, first go, off, uh, who are you? How did you get here? <clears throat> uh, I am Bully. Uh, full name, Bullsworth Tablegoth. I got here in this space by uh, graduating school, no longer having a creative outlet. So I decided the internet would be my new audience, and I've regretted it ever since. Mm. Otherwise, I got here physically by uh, the act of raw dogging. Perfect. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That three pump daddy situation. Uh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Uh, speaking of three pump daddies, do you like my onesie that I'm wearing? It's a Cthulhu uh, onesie. Do. Is this a new one? It's it's a Cthulhu one. It's got wings on oh, it. Oh, I don't see all the, the, the tentacle stuff. The, well, I, I took I all the tentacle it. stuff off because it kind of uh. makes me look like, uh, <laughs> it uh, makes me look like um, uh, Pee Wee Herman. No. Okay. Somebody with big eyebrows. Insert so okay. Cara Delevingne. This is my Cara Delevingne onesie. Uh, there you go. Amazing. Yeah, Perfect. I dig it. Cthulhu's great. Pajamas are great. I, I dress in theme. These are my pajamas. You like my pajamas, Wes? Uh, I can tell. Uh, did you get those pajamas from Playboy.com, the uh, clearance section? The smoking no, jacket? I, I love it. You, you know where this comes from? This uh, this is uh, the Savage Fenty collection. The, or from oh, the Kumo collection, I should say. The Kumo collection, yes. When we were yeah. playing, uh, getting ready for a game, he linked this saying this was going to be his thing. And I saw that. I'm like, I actually like that a lot and i'm going to purchase it except i didn't my my partner purchased it for me 
and here I am. It's very interesting that you purchased that, and it was uh, it was our dear friend Dimples and Dice Prince, mm-hmm. uh, known as Dimples and Dice around the internet, uh, Prince, uh, who was like, "Yeah, I'm totally gonna get this Savage X Fenty, uh, you know, men's loungewear." And you're like, "I'm totally getting it," and I think he ejected out of that, so you definitely committed. He didn't, and I quietly acquired it, and this was my outfit for my vasectomy. So it's got a lot of memories for me. I wore just this for like a week. Perfect, perfect. Well, I recovered. That uh, that really links into uh, my next question. Uh, is uh, what can you tell us about the second? I'm kidding. Uh, no, no. Uh, I would love to talk about my that, terrible recovery period. Uh, back half uh, is when we're going to talk about the second. Yeah, recovery. we got to build up to that. Exactly. Uh, well, we've got a big question here: is uh, where are you from, and what kickstarted you into uh, putting content online? I am from St. Louis, Missouri otherwise known as misery even though i, I like it I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna dog in st louis we got problems but we got cool stuff too mm-hmm. uh that's where i'm from that's where i've lived in or around there i should say first half of my life was there second half of my life was in the 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 country but now i'm back ish uh how what was the second part of that how'd i get to uh, the internet? yeah and how did you start making content on the internet for people so uh I'm going to reveal one of my bigger secrets. That's not a secret because we've we've talked about it. And it was from uh, – I've always had some sort of creative outlet thing okay. that I specifically – I like doing stuff with people. I've never really been big on, like, I create this thing, mm-hmm. you consume it, and it's just a one-on-one situation. I like doing stuff with people. Um, when I first got into writing, plays was my thing. Mm-hmm. We had, like, a, a, a thing at my college, 24-hour play festival where – writers would come in we would get a theme and then we'd write a play we'd stay up all night writing a play and then 24 hours later you get to watch that perform that was one of the coolest things i've ever been a part of i loved it um that seems that seems dangerously close to like a college improv group i was gonna say after that uh, Mm -hmm. i got involved in improv which also i just love having that that audience thing and it's a group Mm -hmm. thing it's different people throwing ideas together uh, half the time it doesn't work, but sometimes it does, and it feels awesome. And creating things to me uh, only kind of counts as if there's some sort of audience reaction. And then uh, I got out of improv, and then I was kind of I didn't have a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't going to do improv outside of college because I know I know when to stop. Perfect. So I, I made that decision. Uh, and then streaming was sort of the next thing I thought of. I don't like, I, I knew I would never be a streaming personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Mandy tried doing that a little bit and failed, although I'm doing it now with Rachel, I guess. But uh, either way, I'm not good at that. But I'm good at telling stories with people and letting other people do the work with me yeah. and having someone to watch it. Yeah. And that's when I came up with like Table Goth. I was like, hey, me and my friends, we've, I play RPGs for my whole life i'm like let's and i of course we're all doing it because we think we're good at it yeah and i'm like i'm great at this so i should share my my talents and my friends talents with the world mm-hmm. uh and it was hard it was very hard and it sucked because we did it in person and we have no we don't have a tech person we don't have anyone with production experience we don't have anyone with any like you yeah. can tell watch our early stuff you could tell uh but i stand by the stories i stand by the characters but that's that's how we got to streaming Mm-hmm. and it didn't immediately fail so now i'm still doing it and uh i went right when i was about to quit uh covid happened and then there was nothing else to do so i'm like you know what i'm Might gonna stay well in it. And i'm in. gonna mm-hmm. yeah but i'm gonna play instead so i joined a couple games as a player and then uh then the thonic kids things happened that was gonna be my last thing i ran and here we are now i can't stop i'm in it to win it um so you once described yourself as the Ric Flair of the tabletop, the tabletop role-playing uh, whole sphere, um, but now you're saying that you're more of a Michael Corleone because every time you try to get out, they pull you back in, it seems. Exactly. Okay. They okay. being me. Okay. Uh, to, to piggyback off of that question there, um, so you said that you like working with people more than being a lone wolf. Um, and yes. you've even been quoted as to saying that I could never be a Sigma grind set king. I am a total alpha. Yeah, so it comes many to quotes from me tonight that I'm yeah. hearing for the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like me. How, how do you feel about the Sigma grind set and uh, AVO? The Sigma grind set AVO. What's AVO? ABO. Pardon me. 
I don't know what that means either. You don't? No. Interesting. That's not what my card says. Uh, anyways, moving on. Okay. So, um, so oh. what's a, uh, what's your least favorite tattoo that you have? Uh, my least favorite tattoo is this one because it's also my only one. So my least favorite is also my favorite. You only have one tattoo and you chose your chest to be your first tattoo spot. I have one tattoo, and it is my entire upper torso. So it's one giant ass tattoo. That uh, it, it it's fine. I got it when I was younger. I, I stand by it. It's a little uh, it's a little Ed Hardy now. It's mm-hmm. a little prison tat. But mm-hmm. uh, you know what? I, I I'm I'm not gonna hide who I am. I got a little Ed Hardy in me. I got a little prison in me. So. <laughs> uh, can we go ahead, producer? Can we go ahead and put that out as a quote? As I've got a little prison in me. Um, uh, okay. You can take that a few ways. No, I can take right. it a few ways. Uh, that that's that's that is your words, not ours. Uh, all right, Gulag mm-hmm. Greg. We have an audience question here from Duval King Jacob. It says my yes, question please. for Bully is: Can you tell the people at home the incredible outfit you were wearing at Dimples pre-party, pre-Pax Unplugged, and where your amazing comes from? I.e., who did you sacrifice? That's a You've managed to fit in three questions into one question, and I think that's the most impressive thing that has happened. That's Duval style. That's Duval style. Um, hang on, I'm gonna have to find this so I could because that was three. Tell people incredible outfit. The outfit I wore, um, because again, I am incredibly inauthentic. I like having a a, a mask between myself and the world. So for Pax, I was like, instead of dressing like a normal person, I'm just gonna be in practically a costume. Mm-hmm. Um, and because you're all a bunch of nerds, you loved it. And yeah. that made me love the people even more. Uh, what, okay. what what was I rocking? What was I rocking? Was it the turtleneck? It was the turtleneck. The you turtleneck. had the black turtleneck with the fur coat. Black pants. Uh, the black fur pants. Coat, the yeah. My thrifted the... fur coat, which I love that thing. I yeah. bought that for a Cruella de Vil costume. Mm-hmm. Where I did a... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I was Cruella. Had some Dalmatians with me. It was a good time. It was serving me well ever since. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, glasses changed courtesy of Miss Petty Dreadful. And a hat. Was that uh, perhaps your costume from 2018, Halloween 2018? No. Oh, wait, my, the, the Cruella de Vil costume. Cruella de Vil? Yeah. I don't know years. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Probably. Interesting. I, I'm big into couples co- or group costumes mm-hmm. or couples costumes. Mm-hmm. So if you could tell me who I was dating, I could tell you what I dressed as, okay. and that's about it. All right. Uh, I once dressed up like Mickey Mouse to impress my ex fiance. Note the X on that. Moving on. Um, you have written uh, something called the Player's Guide for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Now, before we talk about that tome and that little undertaking that you took under, uh, let's talk a little bit about Table Goth. What is Table Goth? Oh. <sighs> What isn't Table Golf? What Table Golf isn't is a successful and respected uh, <laughs> a, a, a TTRPG streaming group. What we are is started as is a group of my IRL friends, uh, uh-huh. none of which had played Vampire before, went, got together to do a little Vampire, put it on the internet, uh, and have fun with each other. That's what we started as. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what have we done together? We LARPed together. We went to a LARP, which was great. Got to LARP with Jason Carl and Alex Ward, Shane Easton, Justin Achille on the ones and twos DJing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we tried to get fully into the vampire stuff. Um, we did for a little bit. I still love vampires. I still a, a World of Darkness stan. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we just sort of do whatever. That original group, we still, we still, we technically wrapped up our original mm-hmm. game. Um, I... Uh, have problems with my head, so I still have not actually released it. It's been done for months. <laughs> I just have to put it together and release it. Uh, that was cool. Now we're just doing whatever. Now it's me or Rachel or whoever just sort of doing whatever project comes to mind that seems fun. That's We, mm-hmm. we are whatever we decide to be day by day. Excellent. 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 And that show was called Taste of Youth, correct? It is. Tell us about Taste of Youth, Bully Table Goth. Taste of Youth, um, I can't recommend because the production is so bad in those early seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't hear our dear, sweet, soft-spoken Mandy in half our episodes. Uh, it's us in a basement trying to do real-life production with cameras and lighting and 
Uh, you can't see the quilts we have, like, stapled to walls to help with the echo. Uh, each day took an hour or more of setup. Um, half the time, we lost, like, whole chunks of the game. It, it was hell, truly hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I loved it. It was still very fun. I love that story. I love those characters. I, I stand by it as as a game, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can't can't say it's not embarrassing to go back and watch now but um it's 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 uh, some friends having a good time together and telling also what i believe is a pretty unique vampire story it definitely feels different than all the other vampire streams i have watched mm -hmm. and back then i watched all of them yeah yeah i agreed i think that's something that me and you had in common is that you and i both especially in those early days uh because we've known each other for so long um, we had not just gotten to know each other through a Monster Heart stream, but we actually uh, were old college roommates together. Um, something uh, about those old streams. Um, what do you think is your most underrated product that you've put out that deserves more love? Uh, that we as Table Golf put out, yes. or we as me? Uh, you know what? Way. I'm the I'm the best part of Table Golf. I'm the most important, and I'm a creative powerhouse genius behind it. So it's going to be the same answer. Humble too. Uh, underrated, underrated, incredibly humble. It, uh, it's a toss up between two. Um, I love the Good Society game we okay. ran with. Uh, I ran for uh, Shane Easton, uh, Miss Petty Dreadful, Raquel Skellington. And Elisa Penrose, mm -hmm. uh, a stellar fucking cast of all stars that just never really popped off because I'm terrible at the whole marketing social media thing. Uh, it was just a, it's please go watch that. I feel like Good Society at all. It's only three episodes. Um, First really, thing I ever they, saw they, of yours. Really? Yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I specifically love, I feel like I stuck the land, I stuck the ending on that okay. better than almost anything I've done. Wrapping something up is, is difficult. Okay. And I feel like my players really enjoyed their how things wrapped up for them, and they had a great time. And to see like Shane, well, you'll see if you want. I'm not gonna spoil it because I want you to watch it. But go people watch go it. watch that. It's it's a great little three parter. It's a toss up between that and then I did a Y2K Thulu, Call of Cthulhu 1999 thing that uh, uh with good friend IRL. Uh, Nick, who doesn't really do any streaming stuff, but I, I love having him play with us. I put he's in my home game. And yeah, that was just a cool concept. That was like weirdly emotional and creepy and really fun, kind of different Call of Cthulhu modern vibe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely check that out. Definitely check that out. Okay, so we have some Patreon questions here. And we're going to go to uh, at Sade, uh, who is at Sade. SS Ambrose underscore on Twitter, asks, what do you look for in a cohesive player group? Alternatively, what do you look for in a player to get the best experience out of a tabletop session? Mm, um, mm, uh, trust. Trust is a big one. Uh, I've been in groups where there wasn't a lot of trust between players, and I've been in groups where... Uh, you might not have the all-star players, but it's a group that all trust each other, and mm -hmm. that's going to go better 100% of the time than uh, a group of professionals who don't really have that uh, that level with each other. It's mm -hmm. always it's always going to be a inferior product to a, a group of people who just fully trust each other to tell the best story they can. That's trust is a very big one, and then um, someone willing to make decisions and realize we're out. There's a difference between a stream game and a non-stream game. Right? Yeah. Um, I play, I've played in year long campaigns where they're like are hardcore, whatever. And, uh, you got to do what you got to do. You got to play to win. Um, but in a stream, things need to happen. Things need to be fun. And I, I specifically will select players that seem a little bit chaotic, but I know they're going to make chaotic decisions, uh, that I'm going to love dealing with. So, and, and that goes with trust, right? If you're going to be, mm -hmm. you're going to be on the wild side, uh, you need to be able to trust each other to be wild and then the rain of day to do those things. So that's the, that's the combo I'm looking for. Interesting. Trust and due diligence, a can do attitude, willing to buck go wild. the distance. Buck wild. Excellent. Excellent. Speaking <laughs> of buck wild, we have at Vin Vox VA, uh, who is also a member of our Patreon Pass. comfort club. Um, well, you can't do that. Uh, you should have checked the waiver. Uh, so okay. what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? 
I ever been given advice? Has anyone thought that was worth trying to help never on my had, path? Never whatever? had a doctor or anybody kind of. Never had a doctor. Period. Uh, okay. Best piece of advice. You did I've say got. you're from Missouri, so that does track. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I don't know if I have an answer to that. Maybe I'm un governable un un un, un, un advice givable well let's let's I make this think of like solid let's make this a little bit more t-ball for you then what's the worst piece of advice that you've ever given oh man i love telling people to go the nuclear option i don't know if that's the worst advice because i think the nuclear option oh you're a real princess daisy type of character aren't you yeah the, aren't you tired yeah, of being yeah. nice have you ever wanted to go ape shit Absolutely. That's always my go-to advice for anyone with a problem for anything. It's the, uh, it's the best advice. You know what? I'm going to say, I, I won't say personally what it was, but I, you know who gives great advice uh, and also gives me bad advice all the time is uh, shout out Mandy Morose. Okay. Uh, she's one of the few people I will reach out to. It's like, hey, here's a situation. What should I do? Because I know one of two things are going to happen. One, uh, she's going to tell me some, to go the nuclear option. She's okay. one of the only people uh angrier than me and then i will be able to see that be like mm, that's too much i'm mm -hmm. gonna do this instead so i secretly get good advice out of it or a lot of times she gives me very solid advice on what to do as well so I, i'm gonna Sorry. say best advice a giver i've had was her i i don't know what specifically that would be excellent excellent so let's go ahead you've mentioned mandy morose uh the um better half of or the better i guess i could say fourth or third of table goth here uh, said by some uh not my words some this is it's on the card here um fair, fair. but uh you you have started i mean you essentially started table goth with mandy uh you have a series of videos that talks about vampire the masquerade and kind of gives the ins and outs and some storyteller tips and some player tips and a little bit of a deep dive and everything of that nature what got you two started on that and why am i not interviewing her for this series season finale why am i interviewing uh you? you should i would love to see her on here and you're gonna get one of two things i don't think either one of them is gonna be good but it's gonna be great content okay uh how do we get started on that uh i saw uh I, that that's how i learned games uh okay. that's how a lot of people like i i like watching a video of like here's how to do the thing okay and there was not a ton of that for vampire mm -hmm. so i was like hey we we should do some of those mm -hmm. uh but again i don't like just being the personality myself and i was like uh mandy uh is gonna be here with me because mandy uh knows very little about this stuff but she's gonna learn alongside with me and give her perspective as we try to explain stuff okay uh and also i'm gonna be able uh, from the business side of things right there's a good opportunity like the, those those videos do very well so yes. it's just a smart thing to do. Then uh, then you get Mandy Morose to stick in your thumbnails and trick people into clicking that way to find out we don't know what we're talking about. So it was uh, uh, it, just a, a, an underhanded tactic and also something I really enjoy doing and having fun with. Excellent. 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 Well, shout out, Mandy Morose. I don't think I've ever heard Bully talk nice about anybody other than you. And I got to know what kind of dirt you have over him for that. Any person I am scared of. <laughs> uh, speaking of being scared, uh, you concocted a pretty interesting way of mutual aid and fundraising called No Kindred Hungry. Am I correct in that, man? Mm -hmm. You are. You are. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be a brainchild of yours. What is No Kindred Hungry? No Kindred Hungry. Uh, back in the Wild West days of Vampire, there was uh, a handful of us who sort of started early uh, with the release of the game and then started our campaigns. Now there's tons of them out there, mm -hmm. many of them great. But there used to only be a few of us, and there's, there's, there's a lot of us, a lot of DMs, GMs, storytellers, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. uh, do that a lot and don't get to play a lot, or at least that's how I felt. Like, it'll be cool that all of us who run games get to run games for each other and just sort of rotate being players i thought it was an interesting mm -hmm. concept i was like let's do that and and do it for a good cause um and at the time i chose uh the the, the no kid hungry which i chose that first and then i was like oh no kindred hungry is fucking that's I, I, that's a Perfect. great name that's Very still a great name right 
Uh, so we did that. We brought in some guests for things. Uh, Shane was involved in it as well. Shane got to run her very first vampire game, which was amazing. Um, yeah, it was a good time. We raised a good chunk of money too, and uh, got to let. And also, it was a good way to sort of do it. I th- that might have been the first like community vampire thing that happened back in the day, where like we sort of crossed streams with our different communities and games and brought it all together for that. Agreed. And uh, I, I lost the first episode of that just to show my uh, unprofessionalism. Episode one, you can't see anywhere because it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, lost to the sands of time yeah. and the internet. But you go watch all the rest. They're a good time. I recommend Shane's. Shane's is what was my favorite. Um, so with No Kindred Hungry and Taste of Youth and the rest of the content, you've got Cult of the Blood Gods, multiple streams for that on Table Goth, things of that nature. Um, so obviously you'd say that you'd have your hand on streaming to an extent because you're still doing it. Uh, what tips would you give people to looking to get started into tabletop streaming other than don't do it? How did you know? Yeah. Uh, tips. Because I've to said the exact streaming. same thing. I'm not. I, I, I first of all, I'm not the person to ask tips on how to get into streaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not good at it. Uh, but my tip is, you you need to get in it for the right reasons. I'm gonna say that if you're looking to get in this space for a uh, fame or money or anything of the mm-hmm. sort, uh, you have not done your research, mm-hmm. my friend. Uh, go look at some of the most successful among us not including critical role uh because they are an extreme outlier and you'll see that this the even making it uh Uh isn't really going to get you a lot of that uh but if you're having a good time and just wanting to create stuff and tell things tell good stories um Uh but also of course you want an audience you want a brand there is room to grow The, the the this whole business can only go up i don't think it's going anywhere yeah so like the opportunities are there but I think some people get into this looking for immediate uh, gratification in those ways, and that's mm-hmm. when it's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of other ways to take happiness. As long as you can be happy with doing other stuff or other parts of this give you happiness, it, just go into it with the right head is my advice. And uh, don't be shitty to people because we all talk. Clearly. And uh, to kind of touch on that, because there's been a lot of talk about what is considered professional, what is considered safe, what is considered, um, you know, the decent or the right way to take part in this quote unquote TTRPG community. I've had other guests that we've talked to about that. We really hate that term. Uh, Jacqueline Brick or Jax uh, stated that uh, she prefers the term a tabletop ecosystem uh, because that's kind of what we live in. It's not a community because a community has, you know, standards and ways to protect each other and stand (laughs) you know a baseline kind of you know well like widely recognized rules and culture to take part in um but we do not uh but what is what would you say if you were given the stick for a little bit if you were given the you know you know you're you're in the fucking driver's seat for the next six to ten months let's say what is something that you need or that you think that this ecosystem needs to lift it up further past this? And do you think streaming is a part of that future? Or do you think that maybe people should start looking at ways to cash in on entertainment things or display entertainment like actual plays or panels or interviews? Do you think that there's another platform that they should be looking for or something? Like, what are your thoughts? Like, if you had, like, utter control over this whole thing, what do you think it needs more of and what it definitely needs less of? Um, uh, mm. I think like a direction the the, the our ecosystem should go in outside. I, I think streaming's fine. I like stream. Obviously, I like streaming. Um, uh, I would like to for people to start. Uh, there's there's two schools of streaming. I think mm-hmm. there's the one that a lot of people like is where it feels like they're watching a home game. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's an audience for that. There's people like that feel. Um, but then of course you're competing with other media, and other media is highly produced and polished. Um, and I love, I, because I cannot do it. I love seeing like really well executed polished streams and things like that too. Um, well edited podcasts and things of that sort. Uh I think if RPGs are going to sort of break into that, they need Uh to be able to sort of present themselves on par with a lot of the other media that people consume. Um, the, the DIY thing is, is charming, 
Yeah. Um, and I think that works for people who are already into RPGs. They know they know the, the fun of having a home game and sitting at a table with people. They like seeing that emulate. If no one's ever had that, it's they're not really going to know. They're not going to have that nostalgia for it. Mm-hmm. And, and you can kind of bring both. You could be very polished and then have that group of people who get along with each other and have that that vibe that makes people want to do it themselves and then recreate that vibe. Um, that's that's kind of what I would like to see more, actually. It's just like uh, groups, just like people finding, because right now there's a lot of big names and everyone rotates the big names. Uh, at the beginning of Vampire especially, the thing, I mean, I did it too. The thing was guest stars. It was just constantly tagging a big name to try to draw people to your thing. That stuff's fun, but most groups that have done well long term in D and D and these other spaces are just like a group of people who get along. Most of them knew each other in real life. Some people came together on the internet, and then they just vibe well together and they just do their thing. And people will follow them for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to see some of that instead of clout chasing. It's just like uh, uplifting talent, looking for talent rather than looking for numbers. That's that. That's how this is gonna get to a good place. Um, and then also, it's not always just streaming either. Uh, honestly, if you want to be big and teach RPGs, you should do podcasting. Podcasting's way more successful. Mm-hmm. Um, the nature of the games, the length of these games, make them much easier to consume in a podcasting format where you mm-hmm. take it in when you can in bits rather than uh, sit down and watch a three- to four-hour stream. So I don't know. I- I'm interested to see what people go. I- and I think we're still figuring out formatting. People are met constantly fluctuating the lengths of these and how they're introduced and seasons and think like things like that. There's all sorts of weird experiments we could do, and I, I, I want to see more of that. But me personally, uh-huh. I, I, I think the going hundreds of episodes at a time and no one's ever going to catch up with you is that I don't think that's going to be the way to go. Unless you're doing a podcast, then maybe. So yeah, that, that would be my general kind of direction advice uh stick wielding i would say for because i i i love seeing rpgs thrive mm-hmm. this space get big and better because also that mean and writing i'd love to see more yeah. people writing stuff and introducing stuff and having weird little indie rpgs and just me, just our rpgs could be so many things i love seeing the different sort of emotions and experiences that these new games are trying to or some of the old games are trying to emulate so more people playing means more people writing and that's a good Indeed. Uh, at Werewolf Fields in the chat says, so which of these two is table goth? Just out of curiosity. Where do you see yourself in this whole scale and the spectrum? Which of what two? What was my two things I said? I DIY forgot. or kind of well-polished? Uh, so we're transitioning. We started very DIY, not mm-hmm. polished at all. And it was like the, it was the people I played with in real life to get, uh, uh, though that group in particular, we had not actually played a game together all of them I have played games with and most of them have played with each other t- sort of things. So we were very DIY um, and we, we had a lot of fun with that, but um, we, I've become, I've taken more of an interest in production and overlays and things like that. Again, I can't really do them. I'm not great at them, uh, but I know what they should look like. I know what to, to strive for at least. And now uh, as werewolf feels, no, I make people send me uh, photos of themselves and little intro videos of themselves. Mm-hmm. So I can do trailers. I'm starting to lean in the produ- production side of things. So mm-hmm. that's the the transition I would say table golf is heading. Uh, but still trying to tap into the feel, the feel of this sort of a people having fun together type thing. Excellent. Excellent. At Ashton Works in the chat asks, are you the table or the goth? The table. Always the table. The table. I am the table. Uh, excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. Uh, so to kind of mix things up here, uh, on December 3rd, 2021, near the Pennsylvania Convention Center, which is at 1101 Art Street in Philadelphia, PA, uh, you were walking down the street with the April Ray Gun and Prince, also known as Dipples and Dice Around the Internet. There are other two other people there, one whose name I shall not use because they are uh, just a harmless bystander in this entire thing, and then myself. There was a conversation that uh, proceeded that was talking about improv comedy groups, particularly the mm-hmm. ones that are in college. And uh, through the nature of that conversation, uh, two of the people there at the April, April Ray Gun and at Dibbles and Dice around the internet uh, proceeded to bag on me uh, to start uh, essentially uh, uh, just d- verbally destroying me because of my participa- participation in improv comedy uh, in um, – in college. Now, I have to ask you at Bully Table Goth, uh, 
you were there, correct? Yes, I recall. Okay, okay. So, while you were there, did you, in fact, at any point, try to steer the conversation away from such conversations as backing on one person for being involved in college improv comedy, or did you, in fact, join in on the fun? Uh, this is what was going through my mind. Okay, um, okay. You, I, I just, I just, comedy you, was... you can explain yourself. I just need you to answer the question first. And then you can oh, what I yourself. did? Yeah, what did you do? Um, what, did, what did you... I, I joined in on the, the you being uh, immolated in the street in front Indeed. of everyone. Immediately Indeed. and enthusiastically mm-hmm. joined in. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I have never, ever felt like a grunt from the uh, popular video game series Halo before in my life until that moment. So you proceeded to join in on all the uh, fun yes. and games and everything. Uh, kicking you as you were down. Yes. So to speak. And, and I will say, had they started physically kicking you, I would have joined in on that as well. Now, there is, in fact, a vulnerable moment that you had at PAX Unplugged that we will not go into detail for uh, due to the, uh, the, the amount of the public that was involved in this situation. I feel like it involves its own separate investigation into what happened. Uh, but <laughs> you made a confession to me, did you not? I did. I did. What was that said confession? Uh, I later told you that I uh, not only enjoyed improv, but was also in a college improv group. So you yourself are saying right now that in that moment when we sat there and we had a vulnerable moment with each other, you let me know that you, Bully Table Goff, if that is your real name, it is. Not only jumped in the degradation of somebody's college pastime <laughs> and kicked them while they're down, but you yourself or an active participant in said pastime yourself, but you kept it from the rest of the group until the time had passed. That is correct. And But I confessed, and I didn't confess later because I thought it would make you feel better that mm-hmm. I also did improv. Mm-hmm. I confessed because I knew it would hurt you knowing that I did this thing to you while also uh, Mm -hmm. being guilty of it myself. So, Your Honor, before I present to you the rest of the evidence that I have before the jury and uh, and our uh, defendant here as well, I just have one question for the defendant. If you could go back in time, on the eve of that night, would you change anything? Uh, You know what? I would, actually. I would have dunked on you harder. Uh, faster and stronger in front of everyone. I would have started a physical a physical assault uh, and, and publicly beat up an improver for being an improver. All right, all right. That's my only regret. That's all I need to hear. No further questions, Your Honor. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I will say, I want, I want to let you know what was going through my mind so people okay. just don't okay. think I'm a bad person to, to see that I, I'm a project of conditioning. Okay. Uh, my, my friend group in real life, we have a, a saying called blood in the water. Mm-hmm. And usually at some point, someone's mm-hmm. being targeted um, for something similar. We're making fun of them or doing something. And um, the, it's always a pivot. The trick is to never be that person and to try to immediately latch other people on to go after that person. So and once we smell blood, we're going after it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you first mentioned improv, I was... If I had been faster, I immediately was excited when you said you did it. I the, the words were on my mouth to be like, oh, I also like I was gonna start talking to you about it, sharing mm-hmm. stories, whatnot. Because mm-hmm. um, improv's a lonely existence, and I was excited. And the only people who care about it are people who do it. So mm-hmm. we're about to have a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, uh, those of you who know April Reagan know you don't you don't get on the other side. Uh, April Reagan made the first cut, and then I saw, oh, April doesn't like this. And then Prince, Dibbles of Dice on the internet, uh, opened the wound further. And I'm like, oh, none of them like this. And then I was like, I'm not going down. I saw the blood, and you were the one bleeding. So I'm like, I got to be in on this. I got to be in on the uh, the assault. And I did. It's a survival tactic. Um, and there's something exciting about it. It's something that made it more fun knowing yes. it was naughty because I, I was guilty of it myself. It made it all the sweeter. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, enough of this Danny Ocean chicanery. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on. Okay. David Lynch is known to say, I don't know why people expect art to make sense. 
they accept the fact that life doesn't make sense. As well as saying that I like things that go into hidden, mysterious places. Places I want to explore that are very disturbing. And that disturbing thing, there is sometimes tremendous poetry and truth. Keeping that quote in mind, can you tell us about Hades High School and your experience with the Thonic Kids? Hmm. You're uh, putting lofty uh, connections to Hades High School, uh, which was I'm merely just reading just, the cards here. Is... Just to be a horny little project and not art. Um, but no, Hades High School was a... Uh, 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 I, mean, I think it makes perfect sense. So mm -hmm. I, I think David Lynch is a hack and a nobody. And I, I take chagrin with you attaching it to this. No, that's not true. Uh, Hades High School was a uh, the most fan y thing I've ever done, um, which was combine the, what we know and love as Hades. And I was like, we got to put it in a, a high school AU. It's just a simple, fun little thing. Um, but I couldn't leave it at that. I'm like, also, I kind of want to make this fucked up and <laughs> emotional and dark, which the game is too. I'm like, I just sort of want to highlight some of those things about the game instead of the usual uh, shipping horniness that we see with Hades. Before you go further, uh, but both with of those things idea. can be true. Well, before yes. you go further, can you explain what uh, Hades is to our straight listeners? Ah, uh, Hades is a popular video game by Supergiant Games. Mm -hmm. It is a roguelike mm -hmm. thing, and it's it just, you, you know what it is. Everyone knows yeah. what it is, even the straights. That's what makes it so good. Yeah. No, no it is easy to admit that it is queer culture. Uh, Hades oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Perfect. All uh, right. Uh, and yeah, and it's it's about the gods. It's about the, the Greek mythology underworld stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's this kind of the two sides, right? We, we deal with the underworld people, and then the gods are there helping. But the talks about the, the tension between the gods and Hades and the underworld people. Um, so we made that we made that sort of jocks versus uh, weird kids with our Thonic kids versus God Squad. Mm -hmm. And so we sort of took the th a lot of the themes worked out really well in a high school culture. The, the, the tension, the discovering oneself, the navigating these things, the power dynamic. Um, and then, of course, we got to get into the weird, dark uh, mystery aspects of it, too. And mm -hmm. something's not quite right here. And let's figure it out. Got it. Got it. And uh, and you said that that perfectly fit within a high school AU type of situation. And uh, why did you think that Monster Hearts was the perfect system for, for such? Uh, because Monster Hearts is the best uh, high school simulator uh game rpg around mm -hmm. and uh it's very simple uh mechanically mm -hmm. um the idea of sex moves and darkest self goes so well i think with the, the hades universe specifically the characters that okay. i wanted to uh represent in there mm -hmm. and uh, i also i just love monster arts too and want any excuse to play more of it excellent excellent uh at critical k has a Patreon question here. What is your favorite Monster Hearts 2 skin to play, and what is your favorite one to MC? I, I guess to have in a game that you're running, essentially. Uh, I've only played it once. I only played Monster Hearts once. Ran by Miss Petty Dreadful. I played the. I played the uh, bu, 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 uh, Infernal. The one Infernal. with the, the dark pack thing. Yep, the Infernal. Indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I guess that was my favorite because that's the only one I've done. Okay. And um, I really like playing. It, it's sort of the warlock, right? Something that has like an entity out there that you. I like giving the person running the game uh, a good chunk of creative control of what's going to happen to me, and that's that's the good one to represent that. Uh, the mortal. I also really like the mortal. Uh, those would probably be my top two, Monsters two to play, uh, to MC. Mm. Mm. Which one do you think is imperative I don't know. to a Monster Hearts game? I mean, maybe the Mortal again. Yeah, no, you know what, Queen? You you gotta have if you're doing anything with Monster Hearts, anything with like <coughs> high school, you have to have a Queen character. Interesting. Yeah. 
Interesting. Uh, so you've already had the genius of recognizing that Hades is proper ground for fan fiction, like ships and high tense dramatic situations mixed in. I understand you also wrote the skins for that game as well. Uh, you transposed them to fit for the gods and everything like that. Uh, what is one AU or uh, IP or anything that you think you would like to run in Monster Hearts next? Run in Monster Hearts? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I would sort of like to do. I mean, not not. It's. Uh, uh, I guess it's not answering the question, right? It's not an AU IP type thing. Uh, I kind of want to do. Well, I I guess I did kind of do it in Hades a little bit, but a no parents situation, Lord of the Flies, but without all the problems, Lord of the Flies, uh, could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. God, what's an IP? like this time this is for you not to impress other people i do have to or unless you were talking to yourself I, no i was talking to my i don't i don't i've never i never not talked to impressing yourself. people i no. never don't talk to myself and i uh, I, I got over i used to be a insufferable hipster mm -hmm. i did a lot of self-reflection now i'm on the far other end of the spectrum where i mm -hmm. never try to impress anyone uh Interesting. Uh, your question for the Monster Hearts question. Yeah, yeah all right. All right. I'm thinking, what am I into? What am I into? Oh, you know what I do? I do Pokemon. I do Pokemon. Pokemon. But in Monster Hearts? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Interesting. There is a sports uh, uh, supplement that was written by Avery Alder that might help, maybe, potentially. Ooh. Okay. That's I've, good I've thought about That's running Friday Night Light scenario uh, using that. Um, but less about what I want to do, projects that I'm probably never going to get to or stream or anything like that. Rest in peace. Well, not rest in peace, but I, one day we'll get to Whimsy World. Um, okay, excellent. Uh, so uh, what was the band that you can't clung to the most when you were younger, say around high school, college era, that you listened to but not to impress other people, one that you actually genuinely liked? See, high school is my my peak hipster. Everything mm -hmm. I did was to be cooler than the country people I went to school with. But I liked it. You surely I, I have, have to time pretend. to yourself. Yeah. I no 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 no. Um, my fa no no. But also, I unironically loved most of the things. I uh, high school, my big two are still my big two. Okay. Although I will say, hit me harder in high school than say anything. Say anything was my my. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was high school for me. You and I uh, had a common uh, one during one of the recordings for uh, Hades High School. I think it was previous mm -hmm. to Hades High School. We were talking about music on our character playlists, and uh, mm -hmm. one such utilized was "Walk Through Hell," uh, or "I Want to Know Your Plans" by Say Anything, mm -hmm. and that got us talking about Say Anything and our mutual love for Say Anything. What is something that what what do you like so much about Say Anything? Or what is so relatable to Max Bemis and the rest of those boys from Hollywood, California? I like uh, them and another mutual band we love, which is Manchester Orchestra. Mm -hmm. I love bands that do songs that are very personal and unique to them. They're not trying to write songs that are like uh, I, I have a crush on someone and like everyone can relate to that. They have weird specific lyrics or like things that aren't like j j perfectly applicable. Okay. Um, they were in a headspace when they wrote these things and you're not going to ever be in the same headspace as them, but I love your, your take on it as by you listening to it, you're going to put your mm -hmm. own situation into it. And some of the weirdest lyrics that they meant one way are going to mean a whole different thing to you. I like the interpretation that has to happen, and I uh, was uh, uh, I was the main character, right? So I got to really attach a lot of my own shit uh, to Max Bemis's lyrics that somehow were perfectly also fit me, but also they wouldn't have fit anyone else, right? Just me and Max Bemis understood this stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I rode that shit to the ground, and it was it was angry, but it was also dramatic and emotional. Uh, it was weird, poetic. Um, and also the actual musicality was just so fucking good. Um, yeah, loved it, loved it, still love it. Interesting, interesting. What would you say is your favorite "Say Anything" song? That I I never had. A, it, it rotates because again, it, each thing it's it's so mood dependent on me and has like a specific thing I'm looking for that it's 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 a rotation, but. 
uh is if you count is a real boy was a real boy is one album um it, it's always something from that one of those okay. whoa lately whoa has been uh whoa. has been popping up for me yeah love whoa love writhing south uh okay. actually maybe feudal's my favorite i don't know ah, yeah it's gonna change it's gonna change I really like the feudal though interesting so when max bemis said what do the old people teach us but how to die, die, die? die. What do those hissy fits teach you except how to cry, pussy, cry? What do you think he meant by that? Uh, I think one of my favorite lines is what he meant was, uh, nothing makes sense, so I don't think about it. You gotta go with the okay. ignorant, eat, sleep, fucking flee, and forward sets me. That, that, that was my personality. He, it's, people go to movies and get a new personality. I heard that song. And that got a new personality. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, my favorite lyric from Say Anything was, I remember it vividly, love. I've been walking a wreck since the moment we've met, and I caught your eye. Uh, moving on, what movie do you think was the one that quickly grabbed your attention that you wanted to morph your personality the most, like the protagonist? Hmm. Actually, I just had a whole conversation with uh, Miss Petty Dreadful about the... It's been a minute since mm -hmm. I've had a movie that did that. And mm -hmm. I was kind of bummed out because I feel like that used to happen. So which one did it the most or most recently? Uh, I would just say, what was the one that's the quickest? Like, what is the one that you latched on to that, like, that you were like, this is who I am now? Was it like Fight Club? Was it Blade Runner 2049? Was it Boondock Saints? Uh, I was going to say Five Club's up there because okay. of, course, of course it was, right? Yeah. I was in that demographic back okay. in the day. And I yeah. still, I, you know what? I still stand by uh, okay. Polonick's writing somewhat. Um, well, I'm a big fan mm. of Choke. I'm a big fan of Choke. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's Choke, a, that's I love a good Lullaby. Mm -hmm. Lullaby is great. Um, uh, I, it's haunted, weird that Fight Club is good. like one of his worst books that he's written, but it's like one of his Yeah, oh, it, it is the worst fandom by, by yeah. far. That's Definitely. like everything. A fandom Definitely. destroys it. I, 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 I not, no one hates fandoms like I hate. It's a uh, internet leftist Jordan Peterson, Chuck Palahniuk, but like the internet before our internet. You know, the internet when we used to think the internet was cool and hip. Ah, uh, exactly. Um, change my whole personality, and I don't. You know what? Because I, I oh, you know what it was. Uh, 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 no country for old men. That mm. Javier Bardem as uh, Anton Sugar. Yes, yeah, Anton Sugar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was. I was like something about this weird, cool, uh, unnerving, not really mm -hmm. charismatic, a uh, haircut motherfucker. That 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 stuck with me. Yeah. It's like. I, I, I want that I want that confidence. I want to make people uncomfortable. I I gotta be a badass like that. I guess our flipping coins. Carrying around a cattle Interesting. cattle killer. Uh did you ever read the book by Cormac McCarthy? I've read all of his books. Yes. <laughs> like I, again, I yeah. I are you surprised at the fight club Cormac McCarthy? the uh, I, I was a uh I bet was you're a, a real big blood meridian part. fan. Of course, of course. <laughs> Although uh, my favorite unadaptable is, uh, Blood Meridian. Oh, that, you want to talk another thing that changed the Judge and Blood Meridian. The Judge and Blood Meridian, makes sense. Makes sense. The whole the Love character, the, the whole reason why uh, that sh that will never be turned into an HBO show or a movie series is because of that one character. <laughs> That's a very important character that you cannot take out and you can't water down. Very interesting. All right, we have another question for our Patreon. I'm kind of working my way backwards again from them at Let's Critical K says uh what other world of darkness or chronicle of the darkness splats do you like other than vampire what would you say is your most favorite you walked right into my trap for yeah. me to talk about not only my favorite world of darkness game but my favorite ttrpg period which is mage the ascension mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you say that I, I i walked right into your trap and Maybe I walked into a trap that I laid for the both of us. We shall see once we come on the other side of this uh, in this uh, conversation. All right, why mage? Uh -oh. uh, mage mm -hmm. is the most rewarding game for someone mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, character building. Okay. Um, I it was also my first World of Darkness game, 
And before that, I had played games that, uh, which is most games, that you, you pick a class and then you level up in these classes, which is great. It makes sense. Uh, but when I got a sheet that's like, hey, you just pick what you're good at and what you're not good at, and you just create like uh, whatever you want, and you can whatever you're thinking, you could probably make come true on this character sheet. I was like, oh, what? I was like, I can kind of just do whatever because I always, I was a person who was like reflavoring everything and just always trying to do a weird take on stuff. And I'm like, I could just do what I want to do, um, which was great. And that's just the mundane stuff. Then you get into the, the spheres, your powers, the actual mm -hmm. magic system, mm -hmm. which is truly like, oh, I don't have a spell list. If in my mind I can understand how applying uh, control of entropy and compliant control of time and space itself can be used to do a single effect I'm trying to do, you'll allow it if I could roll. Loved it. Loved it. Had an amazing, amazing storyteller for it. Um, and it, we... A super fun group for it. We were all young when we first started playing, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was my first campaign to completion, my first World of Darkness game, and it was just so, so satisfying to truly let your imagination run wild, mm -hmm. um, but also have paradox. I love a consequence. Yeah. So you weren't just all badasses. You Terrible things could happen to you by being badass. It's such a fun system, such a fun game. Uh, I love the lore of it. Yeah, it's I, I still 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 my favorite. No idea how they're gonna do it for fifth edition. I've tried. I've been trying. Uh -huh. I've looked at a lot of the fan things. All of them have something that just doesn't work for me. But yeah. it's the best. Interesting. Interesting. Do you think that the benefit, the main appeal to it, is also the main drawback for people not getting into it as much? Yes, that was also my first unsuccessful campaign. Uh, I played with some people who uh, I, I misunderstood them for the type that a lot of people like structure. A lot of people like, like, just tell me what I can do and I'll pick what to do out of these options. Mm -hmm. That's really useful for a lot of people. It is not a a new to TTRPG friendly game at all because uh, it is alarming the uh, what you can do. And it can be the, the choice paralysis. Mm -hmm. And it's... Yeah, I, I, I ran one that I ended after a few sessions because uh, two of my players, I realized, just weren't really enjoying it, and they mm -hmm. just couldn't wrap their head around, like, the infinite possibility. They're both old-school gamers who really uh, were used and comfortable with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I realized, like, oh, this isn't for them. Uh, I, I don't think I want to continue this because I'm not going to be able to force this on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've also ran other games. I ran one with uh, Miss Petty Dreadful. I did a noir uh, detective style uh, one, which was super fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I did a... Oh, no, no. Yeah, that was that good. Yeah, it was a great time. Interesting, interesting. Uh, my question furthermore into this is that you should have received a postcard in the mail by the time of this uh, interview. But uh, the mail carrier never made it to your house because your manager of likability, Rachel, last name redacted, at Miss Petty Dreadful, apparently waylaid the mail carrier and, and I quote, put tree heads, uh, put tree holes in his head like a bowling ball playboy. Um, so I was not able to get that postcard to you. But that postcard said, uh, would you ever run or play mage with me? Check yes or no. Oh, big, big old check. Big old group. You know what I've been realizing the problem with you is mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of games I've been thinking of, I'm like, oh, what's to be perfect for mm -hmm. that? But I'm like, am I going to be the person who uh, puts the same the same motherfucker in everything I do? You know uh, what? And I might be. I just might be. You know what? You know what? I've actually, we've recently had complaints about this on our own channel, um, though, because uh, we had people complain that we only put the same people on our shows here. Um, and to which I have to say to them, and probably you'd say to yours, because like look at your channel. Uh, if you watch every, if you go to uh, actually, if one of the mods could hit exclamation point YouTube to bring up the link, if you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Karen Cover Studios, and you go and you'll see all of our playlists that I have perfectly curated for you to watch, so that it's not a complete and total jumble. Um, that uh, actually, we do not cast all the same people in all of our stuff. We have some similar people that cross over into some things because we like to work with professionals, and there's some people that we like and enjoy, but. Uh, I think it's it's the same thing that you run into. I think you can just do whatever the fuck you want to. How about that? That like, you know that's like another thing. It's like are you hurting anybody? Are you hurting anybody? No. 
Now, you don't have to put me in everything. I would love to be in everything with you, but I also understand that other people need opportunities, and please do give other people Not opportunities before me. Yeah. Maybe I'd pop in. Maybe. Look, you know what? Anytime. Anytime you're welcome. I would love to play mage with you, Norton. I'm telling you right now. I would love to. I think that we'd have a great time. I think it would drive at Table Goth towards a lobotomy. He's already got the vasectomy, so let's get a lobotomy. Let's add that <laughs> on top. Full. Let's get the full full top and bottoms, as they call and them, the up in Maine. Balls the brain. A real, a real top or bottoms situation here. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, Bully, your latest show that you have been talking about releasing uh, snippets, teases to, on, uh, on Table Goth uh, is called Never Coming Home. Never Coming. Never Coming Home. Never coming. Uh, it is for Hunter the Reckoning, 5th edition, uh, and it seems to have a pretty decent cast. What can you tell us about it that is not a direct giveaway of everything? Because you now, you're still in the middle of character releases. This evening you did tease that at Mandy Morose is going to be playing in the game, as well uh, as myself and Sade. We know everyone in it. I already, I already released the whole cast. Oh, yeah, we have saying who you're playing. Who you're playing. Uh, what I will say, what what I'm gonna say, uh, I, I, this is the most personal game I've ever ran. Mm -hmm. The the themes, the things that inspired me to run this game, is the most uh, self exploratory thing that I have ever mm -hmm. done uh, on Table Goth. Mm -hmm. So this game already has a very special uh, place for me, and I chose a very special cast that I trusted to reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I pitched it as uh, this is going to be trauma, uh, specifically mm -hmm. childhood trauma, which isn't a super fun pitch to people. No. Um, but everyone uh, said, I see you and I raise you that trauma. Like, <laughs> if you ask for trauma, I got you, fam. Mm -hmm. And you all did. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be very good. It's because it's a, a, a new game for a new system. I do try to follow the what you can expect from this. I do want it to be a little bit of a representation of Hunter, but yes. I'm not good at that. And also, I already feel like this is probably going to be very different than a lot of Hunter games because, uh, for example, all of our Hunters uh, grew up together. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a quasi-family. Uh, they have a lot of similar things where, I feel like most Hunter games, it's everyone had their thing, and now we're all together as a cell, and we're taking out the baddies, which is fun, too. But I, I made it really, really personal, and I, I gave reasons for the characters to be connected. And then you and the other players just fucking ran with it and made uh -huh. it so, so good. So it sounds, so you're dealing with familial trauma and, and growth as a found family and as kind of like a family that's been thrusted together as opposed to being truly chosen. Also dealing with the core values and the themes of Hunter as well. On top of that, uh, what kind of media comparisons can you make to this? Like, if you were to tell somebody, "Oh, I like this," so if you like this, then you'll like never. Come yeah, the the pitch. What, what did I? I had one. What did I say to you guys? I said it's a little bit a uh, little bit of preacher. Mm -hmm. I think I said a little bit of American Gods, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely some haunting of Hill House. Mm -hmm. um, what else did I have in there? Maybe Umbrella Academy? Yeah, you had Umbrella Academy in there as well. And the big one, Supernatural, as well for the monster. Supernatural, mm -hmm. yeah. Which mm -hmm. I never really watched, recently started to try mm -hmm. to watch. And uh, yeah, I've talked about this. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up great in a lot of ways, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a decades-old television show. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, there's one that I added to it, and this is my own personal experience with the game thus far, and that's True Detective. Uh, primarily uh, portions of True Detective Season 1 and a lot of True Detective Season 3, uh, particularly mm. the location. It does take place in the Ozarks. Yes, uh, there's in the Ozarks. Yep, and uh, as well as the um, the kind of the way that you manipulate with, with time a little bit. Now, I hope I'm not spoiling too much, but there is a little bit of manipulation with time within the uh, game. And it's actually quite interesting. Uh, we, we are we're doing... We're doing some weird stuff with it. But we're also doing some really cool character work that I've never seen done before in a game, I will have to say. And that is a testament to you for doing that, as well as the players, who are very good people. And you should yeah, probably... Yeah, all of you have embraced that and are uh, 
as I as I've said to you as players before, is you you all have understood the assignment, mm-hmm. which is so gratifying. Yeah. Yes. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're a good conductor in the front of the choir. Uh, and that's the last nice thing I say about you because we're going to get to another question here. Um, we Perfect. have a question from at VinVoxVA. Uh, who are you and what gives you the right? Who am I? I am your rival. I am your sworn enemy. I am the conductor of your downfall. Mm-hmm. And what gives me the right? Uh, uh, someone has to stop you. Okay. And everyone else is too much of a coward to step up to Vinvox VO and say, I don't know why you're VO in this, but and say no. And I'm, I'm willing to say no more. No more Vin. Um, if Vin was here right now, what would you say to Vin? I'd say let's play in a game together. Let's see what happens. I, I, I wonder if our characters will get along and have fun. Interesting. Interesting. Um, interesting. Uh, now, your producer's at or at uh, Bully's location. Can you go ahead and let Vin inside the room here? Um, I, I wish. I'm just kidding. I'm just I kidding. Wish. We have not done that yet. As you can say, I have uh, we, ready. we tried to get Vin there, but uh, the person that was uh, leading that the train conductor, that the train that Vin was on, uh, has been taken care of by the manager of likability, by, uh, by I, at Rachel, last name redacted. Oh, okay. it is Vince birthday. Happy birthday, Perfect. Vince. Piece of shit. Uh, what is more culturally prevalent to American to the American zeitgeist, uh, Broadway or professional wrestling? You know what? Uh, wrestling is a hundred percent more American than Broadway could ever hope to be. Okay. Broadway is a slim representation of the worst this country has to offer, mm-hmm. and uh, wrestling's for the people. I say this is a Broadway. I'm not a Broadway hater. I'm a hater mm-hmm. in general. You're a foe. Uh, it's the first thing people should know about me. I was born to hate. I'll die hating. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Broadway's fine. It, it's not personally my jam. Musicals are not personally my jam. I say as someone who has uh, been in and watched and seen Broadway shows, I've pre- I've seen I've seen I've never seen live wrestling. I've seen Broadway, but uh. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? The fandoms. Again, I, I enjoy the, the wrestling fandom, uh, specifically the AEW fandom, more than I do the Broadway fandom. Uh, I dated I, da- I dated theater people. I dated yeah. uh, I, I dated that in college, and uh, it made me, made me say no. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you've once been quoted as saying, if there are a million haters of Gary Gygax, I am one of them. If there is only one hater of Gary Gygax, then that person is me. If there are no haters of Gary Gygax, then know that I have died and I am no longer here. What is your spiciest hot take about TTRPGs in general? Whether it be streaming or the industry or anything like that. What is your spiciest, hottest take? What is something that you think could get you called out for? Or, you know, what's, what's something that's juicy? What would be a good thing for people to clip and be like, you know what, this I stand for this? Because you said that you were kind of like, you know, you're a f- this whole interview, you've been saying, you know, I'm kind of a foe, I'm kind of a hater. I don't really do social media. <laughs> I'm a bit of a lone wolf. You've called yourself a kingmaker before. You said, and I quote, yeah, I'm kind of like a kingmaker, you know, like Wormtongue, that guy from Lord of the Rings, LOL. I love Bradley DeReef. Deadwood was awesome. Another quote, another famous quote of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, my TTRP, my TTRPG hot take, my stream. Hmm. Just anything. What's hmm. a spicy hot take? Uh, and I say it's not directly. Someone is going to be like, oh, this is about me, and then get upset. Because uh, I, I am. Uh, I, I also don't want the smoke. I you just want, want the, smoke? the hate. I want the hate from behind the scenes. Okay. Um, my hot take is that uh, it, I'm going back to the guest star thing. I'm going to say uh, it's going to apply to a lot of people, myself mm-hmm. included. That's what I'm going to say. It. We've done the thing. Okay. Um, but having a famous person in your stream uh, doesn't really do shit. It's going to get people to watch that one. Maybe. Maybe. Although uh, I've looked at the analytics, it doesn't really. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and then really just disrupts the flow of what your actual group was trying to do. And uh -huh. people who overdo that, it, it's uh, just stop chasing coattails. Just let, yeah. just uh, build something cool yourself, and hope cool people and uh, more successful people want to work with you as a result. That's that's my, that's my, that's my. Thing. Although I say that as someone who got the the famous werewolf fields in the game specifically to clout chase them, so I'm I'm, I'm a hypocrite too. So here we okay. are. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. If there was one thing that you wanted to be known for before you leave this earth, what would it be? Hmm. I don't want to be known. I don't want to be perceived. I want to be known for... But yet you do tabletop streaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to know be for being a hypocrite. Okay. That's what I want to be known right. for. Uh, uh, well, there's plenty of those out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm in good company. I mean, Not of, here, but in the, the, on the, today. in the community. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do I want to be known for? Mm -hmm. Uh, just doing something that's like, oh, that was, that was, that was cool. That was fun. That was different, right? I'm built different. Mm -hmm. That's what I want people to think of. That was an interesting take creative thing on the thing I like. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's enough for me. What has been the best payoff in AEW so far? Hangman Adam Page versus Kenny Omega and Kenny dropping the belt to Hangman Adam Page. CM Punk reveal in Chicago. Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks in a steel cage match for the tag team titles. Or Julia Hart being established as one of the members of the House of Black. I see you're leaning and you're pointing directly at Julia Hart, now known as Julia Blackheart, I guess, uh, there. Uh, to me and fans, yes. To you and fans, right there, right there. Uh, and that is your favorite member of the House of Black, correct? Yeah, and I love House of Black. I love mm -hmm. uh, all of them, but the, the Julia Blackheart, that's, uh, as, as I said in uh, the Goth Girlfriend stream this week, was uh, a PSYOP operation. Julia Hart was created uh, specifically to target me, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it worked. It worked 100%. Excellent, excellent. Uh, as someone uh, in, in high school dated a cheerleader and then followed up by dating a very alt girl, uh, Julia was pulled from my psyche, um, and and it, it, it's the best. Uh, that was it's been my favorite payoff so far. Uh, so far, mm -hmm. uh, whoever thought of this was great. I love how long it took too. Mm -hmm. Like the the build up was very satisfying. Yep, um, and also. This promo she did shows, like, that's what everyone's worried about, right? Well, it, me too. It's like, when she does it, like, will she actually be like, is she going to be able to embody? We haven't had to see a lot of, like, act. I mean, a lot of acting in wrestling. We haven't yeah. seen the acting skills of mm -hmm. Julia Hart, really, right? She had a pretty, uh, a shtick, a gimmick that was mm -hmm. pretty s similar to her in real life. So we haven't seen her range. This promo mm -hmm. changed everything for me. She, I knew not only was the heel turn complete, that she she's gonna like be she's not just gonna be like a little tag along in this she's 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 house of black and she's embodying embodying everything interesting it was very satisfying one of one of my dream jobs used to be and now almost is again is uh being a writer for professional wrestling and this it, it's stuff like this it's stuff like this if you're a professional wrestler what would be your name what would be your gimmick? What would be your entrance music? And what would be your finishing move? Uh, um, I don't know precisely what my name would be. Here, here would be the story, though. It would, it would be something to do with goat. Mm -hmm. uh, I would want to play like a satyr-like character. I'm talking like fur pants. Okay. I don't know if the horns could really work in a wrestling thing. Okay. But maybe, maybe we could get it too. Probably not. Um, and then it, it's something like that, right? Something with being like a, a satyr type thing, but mostly just sort of a, a super fun hippie like person. Uh, I would want to be aligned with like like private party type things, just like super fun, kind of off the wall, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then do the slow creep into like the dark side of that like the weird dionysus cult like house of black type thing that 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 would be the trajectory i'd want to go on like super good party person like you have or maybe with the best friend something like that and then like corrupting a group of people who are there to have fun and to like oh this is kind of like mm-hmm. they're dangerous that would be super cool uh entrance music I, that i've never thought of i don't know are you allowed to do anything yeah anything i i would i would do something by uh oh what's the song sleigh bell song i'm thinking of the band Sleigh Bells. Mm-hmm. Something off treats. It would be I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh something like Sleigh Bells has that cool, like fun, but it's kind of like a, a, a little bit of a haunting vibe to it, or I yeah. think at least. It would be like real real or something like that. Or crown on the ground, maybe. I do a sleigh nice. bells intro. Um and then and then move, finishing move. It would be I. You know what I've loved that. But I was someone who's super into wrestling. Stopped watching for a very long time. It's recently fell on back in hard. Mm-hmm. I love the rope stuff people are doing. Specifically, I'm not good. I don't know the names of moves. Yeah, that, 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 that's uh, something with the ropes. I love a rope thing. I love specifically buckshot lariat Ooh, it, from hangman adam page buckshot lariat is inspired yeah. is it squirt who's the one who does the thing where like flip on the rope and then come down and do the cutter uh, that is uh ray phoenix does yes. a does the the does the the front handspring legs hit the uh the ro- top rope yeah, does yeah. a back handspring into a cutter it's gotta be something like that. Scorpio right? Sky does something similar, but he doesn't do the yeah. whole flip. He does something similar with a cutter, okay. where it's like a bounce off cu- cutter. He he yeah, he, some... he runs on the rope and he jumps off of the rope and does a cutter. <coughs> it would be a rope move because it yeah. feels like acrobatic and goatee and stuff, but also yeah. like I just those, those are very satisfying to me. I, I love a I, I love a turnbuckle thing or a rope mm-hmm. thing. Well, I can't wait to see your goat man go head to head with my wrestling persona uh cliff coles disenfranchised miner whose special move is the canary in a coal mine which is a avalanche ddt off the turnbuckle uh beautiful beautiful we gotta we gotta become professional wrestlers together We we have to absolutely have to uh speaking of becoming professional wrestlers together tell us about the vampire the masquerade fifth edition uh, uh, player's guide. Before that, let me just point out something that Duval King Jacob said. Hot take, Ray Phoenix is the best wrestler in the world. I will uh, take that. Uh, he is on a constant uh, shift between either it being him or uh, Kenny Omega or uh, Julia Blackheart. Uh, <laughs> the best wrestler in the world I found her. Uh, hey, found yo, her. welcome. Sorry, Duval. Welcome for the Sorry, raid. Duval. Welcome to the raid. You're looking for best wrestler. You're looking for best stable. You're looking for best wrestler. Got him. Got him right there. Shout out Rolling D's 20s. I hope uh, your game tonight was oh. fantastic. We're getting the media. So, yeah, go ahead and tell us about the uh, – yeah, we got Vampire Re- – yeah, fucking – we got Lonzo, fucking – Lonzo, my favorite. Exactly, exactly. Bringing in that Rolling D's raids. So, tell us about the Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Player's Guide that was uh, written by you and uh, published on Drive Through RPG through the Table Golf brand. It is. Uh, okay. But you should still get it because I made it very cheap for a reason uh, mm-hmm. because I put it together way too fast, uh, giving myself a PAX deadline, and uh, it shows. I really, really, really need to go through and fix it and release an updated thing. Uh-huh. But there's still a lot of great stuff in there. My favorite thing about World of Darkness was the uh, backgrounds, advantages, and flaws. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the idea of building a character with like cool backstory stuff that wasn't just that didn't just sit in a, in a document – or wasn't just something you talked about or tried to come out through roleplay, but mechanically affected your character as well. I, I love that. So, and that, in my opinion, is where uh, Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition was the mm-hmm. most lacking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hunter is the same way. There is a not a lot in there if you're looking for merits and flaws and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played in a few games. I ran a few games and saw that, like, people always chose the same ones because honestly there was some that were just like the better ones and not Mm -hmm. even better like mechanically that were just more fun and there's a lot like there wasn't even that many options and out of those small options there already was like half of them that were ignored because they just weren't Mm 
mm-hmm. either interesting or mechanically viable. So I wanted to just put a bunch of options, updating a lot of old ones, and then I made a lot of just brand new ones myself um, that just to, to, to give people those things. Uh, and then I went on to do that with predator types and then disciplines as well. A lot of people, a lot of the old school people think vampire like, oh, they took away all my wild powers, which I don't think that's the problem. But I do want more options because, mm-hmm. again, two vampires with uh, celerity are probably going to be able to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, and there's not that many discipline like categories, let alone options within those categories. They're mm-hmm. usually like two per level if yeah. So again, I'm like, I just want vampires to feel different. I want my vampire for, for celerity to potentially feel way different than your vampire for celerity, and because we kind of took different directions with how we use our power. So that was that was my intention with the book was just to give players and uh, vampire had a player's guide. Uh, they're gonna do one again, so it'll be interesting to see if I have to change the name of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, there's no announcement for it, so I made one because they had a player's guide that was just that a bunch of really cool options. So I, I I gave that to the people again. It's only five bucks. So there's no reason not to have it and look at it. Okay. Um, some people were like, "Oh, well, you in this discipline with this level, blah blah blah." Uh, who cares? Just uh, just change change it if that's what you want. That's some people's complaint with it, and that's that's about it. Uh, but yeah, it's just a bunch of cool options. So because again, my favorite part of Roll of Darkness, like I said with Mage, was. The options when making your character, the freedom, and I wanted to just give more options. And I think some of the stuff's super cool, uh-huh. and you should check it out and use it in your games. I know there's a few games out there that are using my thing, and they've told me, and it's really cool to see that. that that's that was my favorite part so far of sort of putting in the world is actually seeing it used in some games. It's really neat. Uh, I agree. I utilized some of the disciplines from the book in a. A uh, series called Indie Anarchs that you can see over on Marley Games that I was in. Um, that was very cool. I got to play a gangrel uh, that was uh, obsessed with uh, Set and uh, the uh, and the Ministry. So it was very cool Beautiful. to kind of have that gangrel, but also kind of snake-like ability. And there's one such ability that you have in there that's very fitting. Um, it's called Shed Skin. And it's very, mm. very gooey. Uh, speaking of very gooey, we have a, another Patreon question from at VinVoxVA uh, that asks, and this goes into your games, and I, I want to preface this. Uh, in a lot of your stream games that you have, uh, you use a artist, a musical artist, to kind of be the framework for your episode titles and for the themes of your game and your episodes. With Hades High School, it was <laughs> Marina and the Diamonds, or Marina. Um, and for uh, Never Coming Home... I don't think this is a spoiler too much because you've talked about it on online, but My Chemical Romance is a big influence on that game as well. Uh, so with how important music seems to be in your life, uh, what is your go-to playlist? Just, just go-to, like when you're just doing whatever. You're sitting there working or you're writing or you're doing whatever. Uh, ben wants to know what's your go-to playlist. Uh, I have, I mean, a go-to playlist is one mm-hmm. I made called Fancy. I think the first song on song on it was "Fancy" by uh, Reba McIntyre. The now, yes, no, by uh, the the now dethroned Iggy Azalea and Charlie, uh, um, and I never changed the name. Um, I don't even know if that song's on there anymore. Uh, but it's my ADHD dump playlist for any song that's uh, uh, I like. So I put in there. It is, I'm sure, hundreds of hours long at this point. And I usually just listen to the last five or six songs in there. Mm-hmm. And that's how I keep it organized by, mm-hmm. uh, oh, these are the most recent songs I put in there. That's what I like a lot. I'll listen to those on rotation until I just rip every ounce of serotonin from each of these songs as I can before moving on. Um, but now I have like a giant playlist of songs mm-hmm. that I can shuffle and enjoy. Mm-hmm. But usually it's just a rotation of whatever i'm feeling and it's rarely like new songs it's Mm -hmm. usually just like whatever i happen to be Mm -hmm. that's my my that i make i make much use out of the discover weekly function okay um and then i have a table goth playlist actually or a taste of youth playlist that i listen Mm -hmm. to quite a bit too because taste of youth also every episode is named after a song and uh, a lot of good ones excellent excellent 
Uh, I just find it funny that it was the I gave you an out by saying fancy by Reba McIntyre, and you still doubled down and said fancy no, no. by a uh, known ally uh-huh. to the Vim Pop community, uh-huh. Iggy Azalea. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Excellent. I stand by not her, but uh, that song. By that song. It, that song is okay. a, a very important uh, uh, place in my life. There's Shh. a. Yeah, yeah. Should we separate art from artist? It, it depends. There's, there's never, there's not a yes or no. Okay. Uh, they truly, it's a case by case scenario. I think there are times where we can, uh, and there's a lot of times where mm-hmm. uh, the crime absolutely is enough to uh, just not participate in anything they do. Depends on the crime. Uh, excellent, excellent. That is a very measured response. Uh, so yeah, just want to shout out free YSL, free Gunna. Um, speaking of free YSL, free Gunna, uh, what is one project that you really want to do that is in your hopper, but you know that you will never be able to do? What is the one that you know that you will never be able to produce? That The, the dragon that you're chasing. Uh, I know mine. I, I'm going to go back to Pokemon, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really, really want to do a mm-hmm. Pokemon RPG. I love Pokemon. Uh, I think it could be a great fucking RPG. Um, I there's I I've played a Pokemon RPG before, but I can't think of enough fixes for the fact that Pokemon battles are going to be boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, two people with six monsters fighting is either going to be like it is in the games, where each one one hits each other, or you'll try to do something cool and drawn out, and it's going to take two hours. It's going to be worse than a D and D encounter. Uh, I can't. I, I, I've thought of different ways to fix that problem. I thought of lore reasons why you can only have three, which mm-hmm. I think would be cool. Because then you really got to like that moment of like, who do I pick? Could have a lot of like emotional consequences. I want it to be three, like, period. Like, there's no like professor to send all of your extras to. Because I like that emotional like. Because that's a big part of Pokemon, right? The attachment with your your Pokemon having three would be. I don't know. There, there's a lot of interesting. I've crafted a whole homebrew world to make this work and of course i'm trying to make it dark even though it doesn't make sense for po- i mean it can make sense for po- i kind of like the manga but it, it I, it'll never happen because it's uh too hard mm-hmm. or i'm too lazy or a combination mm-hmm. excellent excellent what's yours what's your dragon uh my dragon is a um it is a solo produced series uh, utilizing the cult uh, system. And by solo produced, I mean it is a produced, full function kind of audio slash visual kind of drama. I want the audio to be really good, the sound design to be really tight. Um, but a one on one kind of uh, game using cult that does that goes through uh, exploring grief and recovering from grief and um, uh, just hierarchy of needs and um as well as like introspection and ego death um but i want it to be just like me and one other person um and i don't think i think i want to do it and i and i think for me to actually do it i just have to set aside everything and just do it um it's it's a project that i want to do with leslie um who's on our cheek because i think i think leslie brings a certain gravitas and a certain um not a fan edge that uh that you don't see in a lot of like it's particularly a lot of uh femme presenting um actors and i'm going to call her an actor she's been in multiple different shows so i'm going to call her that uh but i think that she could tell help tell the story um it would be because i'm a big fan of uh david bruckner i'm a big fan of um of ari aster i'm a big fan of uh, a lot of stories that deal with grief, uh, or what we call grief horror nowadays. Things like Midsommar and Hereditary. Mm. And uh, recently we, we watched it last night in my Discord server, uh, The Night House, um, and things of that nature. As well as like Mike Flanagan, I think, especially with uh, Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor. Uh, I think like a lot of stuff with like religious trauma and growing up and dealing with all that stuff. And, and, and confronting grief, but in certain ways where having the supernatural there almost makes it easier. It would be very interesting. But I don't think that I could do it because I'd have to set aside 
when you're doing content creation and you try to put a hand into it as much as I have, um, a lot of people expect a lot of different things from you. And you have to do a lot of different things to make people happy and to also to stay relevant. You have to constantly be doing things. And I think that kind of project would require me to step away from doing a lot of that day-to-day -day stuff uh, and just kind of focus on that. To do it right, to do it respectfully, and to do it correctly, uh, and to not be a hack about it. Because um, that's my biggest fear is to be a hack. Uh, what's your biggest fear? Uh, to be boring. To be boring. Um, well, some nobody has definitely ever said that you are boring. Uh, you once said, I'm like Nostradamus with the sauce. I got those magic finger babies. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen within the next six months. and involves you, me, and that chair over there. Uh, that is a quote from you from PAX Unplugged. Uh, to kind of test out these Notre Dame abilities that you claim to have, what do you think is going to be the next thing that comes up in TTRPG discourse? What do you think is going to be the next hot topic that people are going to be tweeting each other about and trying to, you know, undercut each other about, you know? What's going to be the big thing that just distracts us from, you know, being decent people and making good content and making fun games and playing fun games. Where I mean isn't there just a cycle which which one are we there on? There is now? typically a <laughs> cycle, cycle, but I want to know your, you know, we've already gone through the orcs uh discourse again. The uh, orcs it again. We're back to Brian Wayne Foster. Um uh, I I think I think we're due for another something to do with dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> and people patting themselves on the back for something to do with that. Like a, a game mechanic. Yeah. And living or dying by the the essence of a game being letting mm -hmm. the dice aside and mm -hmm. uh, something with that that's truly just i think it's one of the most boring discourse things that Fud comes fudging about, or not uh, fudging rules that kind of discourse stuff something like that, like that. Yeah. yeah that yeah. that we're due for another one of those that's yeah. probably the next yeah. um and it's one that everyone can get involved in because that's a, good, that's, a lot that, of like that's the you, best part about it not everyone can speak on like racism and things like that. i mean that doesn't stop people people still do it <sighs> people do it all the time um, but but everyone can talk about dice and feel good about it. So, uh, mm. yeah, I'm ready for another dice discourse. Perfect, perfect. Actually, and I'm diving in the next one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be anti dice altogether. Because if you you're use be... dice, you're, you're an idiot, and you're, uh, you have no creativity. Excellent, excellent. If you, if it's just, you're saying if you use dice, you have no creativity, and you're an idiot. Yes, that's what I. That's a stance I'm gonna take because okay. I'm gonna get so much hate retweets from that. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah, no, that that'd be great. That's that's just automatic <laughs> engagement. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to dwell on it because it has nothing to do with us or anything like that. Um, but before we ask these last few questions and we go and everything like that, bully table goth, I want to know exactly and I typically save this question for the end and for Derek to ask it. But I kind of we're at a good place, and we kind of mentioned that that kind of like what do you want to be known for? But what is and this is like to set aside everything that has to do with TTRPG discourse and all this other stuff like that. What is the one thing that you? How do you want to leave this world? Is 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 essentially what I'm asking. What what things do you want to come from your time on Earth? Not not what people are saying about you, but what what. With, with all that you the time that you've spent into what you've done and everything that you've had going on and especially in the past few years where we've had COVID, there's been a lot of uncertainty i mean you had a vasectomy in the middle of a pandemic um i don't think there's anybody as brave as you um going out there a shout out to all of our frontline workers and uh, bully for getting a vasectomy during a pandemic um but we're what not, do you, uh, creating more of me yeah but what do you want to come from your time on earth what do you want to be able to like to look back on and say with pride that this happened and I and I'm glad that it happened or this didn't happen because of of because of what I did or what I said or who I am and what I stood for. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, I'm less concerned with me having a direct impact. I'm a I'm a a, a selfish person. Uh, I think more people should be very concerned with their happiness and mm -hmm. sort of the happiness of those immediately around them. Mm -hmm. Now, if people did that, uh, th things would be better. 
I, 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 I care less about like, I want people to have this opinion of me, mm -hmm. uh, but I do want the things I make to have an impact on someone. Okay. It literally an impact just from like, this entertained me. To, like, oh, that made me think about like this thing personal to me, attaching their own stuff to it. Because again, I want people to bring their own stuff into everything that they consume, especially something they consume of mine. Mm -hmm. It's very important to me is that I'm making something that is is worthwhile but again it's just not boring the only bad art is just something that truly was boring and didn't do anything for you um even if you fucking hated it that's something yeah and that that's what's important i always have to be i have that creative itch i need to be making stuff and i just want a, a, any small to large number of people to just think it was worthwhile to consume what me and my friends have created that's 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 a, the greatest feeling in the world um, and then, uh, just for me personally, uh, I, I'm, I'm a person who is <coughs> used to, I mean, I've gotten better at it, but I was terrified of the idea of regretting something, of not exploring every option, of not, uh, I used to be really bad about having the grass is always greener, uh, mindset and always, instead of being satisfied with what I had thinking like, this thing's great. This person's great. This thing in my life's great. Um, but because of that, this other thing's probably better. Just never, I used to be really bad at truly being satisfied with my, my lot in anything, even though many times I've had a great situation in my life. And I'm learning to be happy with <coughs> that and to actually settle into things. And that, that, that's what I want out of my life personally is be able to look back and be like, I, I did what I needed to do. I didn't just immediately settle for something but I also learned to be happy actually sticking with something that made me happy, figuring out the balance between those two things. Speaking on Which balance, are two different answers to two unrelated questions that I made sense. up, but yeah, that kind of leads into my last question before we get to like a speed round. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I, I kind of want to open this up because this is kind of something because you, you asked before this entire thing, you said you wanted me to dig, to give you an opportunity to either be very truthful or to be completely and absolutely false, uh, and just to lie through your fucking teeth and just be a complete bullshitter. Um, but I Please. want to, uh, end with this, with something where it's absolutely going to face you directly in the face before we get to our, our speed round. Cause we end everything with a speed round where it's like word association. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to answer the first thing off the top of your head. We're going to see how fast you go. But um, Kurt Vonnegut has been known to say, this is a quote of his, of all the words of mice and men, the saddest are it might have been. Um, he wrote those words. and Those are very poignant words, I think, though they are quite simple. And they kind of inspire me to ask you this question. What is the one thing that you wish you could say to a person that you never got to say to them. And I don't want you to tell us the person. I don't want us to tell you, uh, tell us anything about this person or the situation, but what is one thing that you wish you would have said to somebody that you did not say, that you regret not saying? Something that I can't say to someone. So there's a couple different ways I want to take this. Um, okay. I don't know if there's anyone who's like an easy way to read this is like someone's past or you'll never have an opportunity to say mm -hmm. something to someone uh to me i how i interpret this more is uh there's people in my life currently someone in my life currently okay so there's a lot of things i would like who needs to hear things i okay. want to be able to say things and i will i know i will regret not saying them but i just can't say them to the person Indeed. i think that's uh that that might be. What was the question? What's the actual thing I would say to them? What's the what's the statement that you would say or the question you would ask them without saying who it is? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I I'll say who it is. I I, I have. Because this is this goes in the hunter a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. What we're dealing with is the, the the trauma thing, and reflecting on the past has been on my mind a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it's I I have been one of those people, especially as a child. I was great at it. I'm a very I'm still a very out of sight, out of mind type person. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things growing up I never reflected on. I had a very happy childhood, but one that you look back on. Uh, recently went through this. I, I have a younger sister, a much younger sister, who is getting her degree and like she plans on being a therapist, psychiatrist. She's very smart, very emotionally mature, 
um, very into those things. Um, we have such a different takes on our childhood because she reflects on every little thing that's ever happened. Mm -hmm. And she really embodies, and she's also Gen Z and Gen Z loves their, uh, the, 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 their self-diagnosis and their, uh, having their, their issues. Um, and I've had a lot of conversations with her just sort of reflecting on things that have happened with our parents and things like that. And just how weird the lens of looking at it now and like being able to see now, like, Oh yeah, that was kind of messed up to then didn't see it. Maybe it affected me, but if it didn't, I don't remember affecting me. I'm fine with it. And there, there's statements that I, I would never say to one of my parents, but I, I guess would essentially just be, I, I, I need you to, recognize and confront and understand your your disorder where it comes from and what it is now so i have a parent with borderline personality disorder uh and if you know anything about that it is something that is very difficult to diagnose and almost impossible to treat mm -hmm. and someone with that uh doesn't really have the ability to address it or whatever so there's a lot of things that i and it was an interesting thing as she got her diagnosis. She immediately left the therapist who gave her the diagnosis, but like it happened. And I had conversations with my family about it and stuff like that. And it's just been interesting of you should confront that person, but as soon as you confront them about it, you lose them too. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's the thing. I know I'll probably regret never just being like, hey, this is the thing. But uh it's sort of something I'm just waiting out. And it's a thing that like you look at one of the first things I found was like you go to forums and stuff. There's a subreddit called Raised by Borderline, which is great because every single story on there is how I cut off my borderline parent. That's all it is. That's the only advice out there. It's like cut them off. It's never it's never going to get better. Uh, the Sopranos, which deals with Tony and his borderline mother, mm -hmm. was the first media exposure I had and the whole like, holy shit, this is I, I live. I get this. Uh, of course, I have differences from Tony Soprano, but like straight up just like and she's like a straight villain she's one of the most deplorable characters in that and all these characters this this show full of actual murders and criminals um i don't know it was eye-opening it was amazing i loved it but um yeah it's interesting it's interesting reflecting on that and that's reflecting a lot of what i'm doing now with some of the stories i'm telling mm -hmm. but also i don't have the ability to cut them off not because of my uh because I, I i was raised by she I, she raised me when she was uh, she had me very young. Uh, I had a single mother a good chunk of my life growing up. Uh, she's a lot of the people who deal with that by just cutting off their parents. Uh, their parents are still fine on their own, where my uh, mother would not be fine on her. So it's sort of a thing where I just have to like, I, I like it's what it's weird knowing, hey, this is going to be a huge life regret of mine, but I think the opposite would be worse. So that that's 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 my the statement I would make is actually making her address it or confronting it, but instead I just choose to do the easier thing, which is just pretending like everything's fine. That's that that's my deep answer for you. Shit, that is not what I expected, but very pointed. There you go. And very I trust welcome, you, Wes. Oh, would... nevertheless, that was yeah. very good. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. What a way to. And that kind of straight up line of questioning on. And that brings us into our rapid fire question round. I'm going to ask a series of questions to you. And I want you to answer with the first thing off the top of your mind. Um, things that you go with. Uh, things that, 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 you know, that you dream about. All these other different stuff like that. Uh, I want you to keep that in mind as I ask these questions. And don't hesitate. Keep going. Because if you hesitate, I'm going to bully you. It's your namesake. So I'm going to bully you if you take too long. All right? Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. All right. All right. Mm. Well, I got my questions ready, and we're going to start on the count of five, all right? So in five, four, three, two, one. What is your go-to karaoke song? Uh, Mariah Carey, Always Be My Baby. What is your favorite clan in Vampire the Masquerade? Uh, I'm going to go with Ministry. You have to fight a controversial TTRPG figure in a Ted Drews where the doors are locked, but anything goes rules. Who are oh, you taking so on? research. A controversial TTRPG thing? Uh, uh, just because we talked about him earlier, Adam Coble. Amazing. Okay, great. Uh, aliens or zombies? Aliens. What's the most expensive thing that you have ever broken? 
my own heart. Who is one person that you wish you would have met sooner in life? Someone I actually know? Come on, yeah, come on, let's come on, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, 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 I, I'm just going to keep riding the Mandy Moreau stick riding train. All right, all right, perfect. Actually, no, she sucked when she was younger. I tell, you know what I answered, never mind. Perfect, all right, all right, all right. Favorite Gundam series? <laughs> Not G Gundam, 100%. <laughs> G Gundam. All right, yeah, and uh, we've heard about it. You talked about it before. <laughs> All right, um, Tom Waits or Tom Jones? Uh, let's do Waits. Tom Waits. New coat of pain. Uh, dream blunt rotation. Blunt rotation. Uh, Reggie Watts. Who else do I like as a person? Reggie Watts. Uh, uh. That's it. Just me and Reggie hanging out. Just you and Reggie one on one. You think you can handle that? No. Okay. No, uh, you know what? It's me. It's Reggie Watts, and it's mm -hmm. a version of Wes who didn't ignore me when I reached out for help when I was so high. I was my life was collapsing around me. Uh, it's I a version of Wes who would have reached his hand when I when I smiled shyly at him, clearly gave me the signal that I needed help. Instead of smiling and shrugging his shoulders, he would have reached out his hand and say, "I got you." That, that that Wes and Reggie Watts and me. I will have you note that when I asked if he was okay or if he needed any water or any food like that, he looked at Rachel and said, why is he acting like this is normal? None of this is normal. I can't be around him right now. I don't want him to talk to me. You've said all of those various things during that entire yeah, that later. situation. Top, bottom, or middle? Top. Best place to have your first kiss? Wendy's. Worst place to lose your virginity. Arby's. No, I take that back. An airplane. I can tell you from experience, my high club ain't as easy as they say it is. Favorite member of the Thonic Kids? Ben Voxier. Least favorite movie of all time? Least favorite movie of all time is... God, do I watch movies? You know what? Batman vs. Superman. I fucking hated that movie. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Best concert you've ever been to? Uh, it was Manchester Orchestra and when I just got back from uh, a trip. It was their uh, Mean Everything to Nothing. Manchester Orchestra or My Chemical Romance? Manchester Orchestra. Manchester Orchestra or... Ted Drew's Frozen Custard. Manchester Orchestra. Ted Drew's Frozen Custard or St. Louis style pizza. Oh, pizza. Pizza. St. Louis style pizza or Manchester Orchestra. Manchester Orchestra. They always win. You have 24 hours to go and rob a bank with three people. If you fail to rob the bank successfully, which means none of you make it out with any cash, then you all die. Who is the three people that you pick? Hmm. To rob a bank. I would choose uh, my partner. She is a very trustworthy face. She's the smartest person I know. Uh, she doesn't have the gall to do what needs to be done, though. It would be me. It would be her. It would be Julia Hart. Julia Blackheart, specifically. And it would be... Oh, uh, who's robbed a bank? I need a tech person. Who's who knows tech? Uh, you know what? It's gonna be Nobleman Nick. <laughs> he, he he knows how to it's use a computer. He bought a new camera. The guy he's, he's my guy in the chair. He's a guy in the chair. All right, yeah, Eddie Guerrero, yeah. or Chris Benoit. Uh, Guerrero. Brett Michaels or Brett? Uh, uh, Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart? Bret Hart. The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin? The Rock. The Rock or Mankind? Oh, Mankind. Brothers of Destruction or The Rock and Sock Connection? The Rock and Sock Connection. Intercontinental title or the United States Championship? I'm an intercontinental. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And last, but certainly not least, did you have a good day today? Uh, no. 
I woke up a couple hours ago from mm-hmm. being in bed sick all day. So, uh, but you know what? Taking this in consideration, I, overall, good day now. Perfect, perfect. I'm so glad that I could be a part of your good day, and I'm so glad that all of you could join in with this good day for this season finale of Late Night Comfort. Thank you so much, everybody that has joined us for this evening. Thank you so much, Bully Table Goth. Uh, I, I, I also, I, before we go, I have one personal question that I have to ask, uh, because this is for me. This is not for anybody else at home, but I've got to know, who was your favorite character on Euphoria? Oh, Nate. Nate Euphoria. Nate Euphoria is your favorite character? Damn it. Damn it. Uh, ugh. I don't know if I can agree with that, because you know what? I'm a, I'm a Rottweiler. I'm an animal. I eat what I kill. Okay? You know? I don't know if I can agree with that. But yeah, before you go ahead oh, and tell... That's a good contender. Everybody. Season 1 Nate, though. Season 1 Nate. All right. Perfect. Perfect. I can't believe that we are grown people that watch a show called Euphoria on HBO. All right. All right. Before we go, before we raid into somebody and everything like that, like people have done tonight, can you go ahead and tell everybody who you are, what you have going on, where they can find you, and what to expect coming in the few, next few weeks? Um, I'm fully, I'm dying, fully Bullsworth table golf. Mm-hmm. Um, watch Hunter starting next week. That's, it's going to be fucking amazing. Watch that. That's going to be very good. Um, shortly after that, you'll catch me running a game. I can say now, cause I think everyone's agreed and we have a session zero Monday. And I guess the cast is complete cause no one has said they don't want to do it still. Uh, we're going to have some Regency vampire, uh, next edition of what I'm calling cult Chronicles which is cultural cults of the blood god mm-hmm. it could be a little regency with april ray gun rissa rave and wreck it raven it's gonna be a great uh that, that's gonna be good those are all problem people and i mm-hmm. can't see what they get up to um and then what's the next thing we have me and Mandy will be cranking out hunter videos because we gotta gross that'll be happening and then uh and then our next Thonic Kids thing, which will be Rachel running some good society. Sometime in the future. We'll see when. We'll see when. Don't know when. Which will be... Oh, no, no. no. If that, when, then uh, then Prince. That's the end of our, our Thonic Kids blunt rotation. Game yep. rotation. Then we go back to Hades High School, maybe. And yes, then... I would love to. We do whatever I have planned for y'all next. It's probably not Camp Half-Blood, though. Right, I've got some stuff. A uh, little dust on the bottle and some little ideas in the brain. Wowie zowie indeed. Uh, excellent. So make sure I went ahead and dropped the links. Uh, Twitter.com, table uh, underscore goth. You're not going to see anything except for anything to do with table goth. Uh, unless he gets a little bit too drunky wonky at a game cafe in Philadelphia and kind of gets in his fifis, which is great. We op- we love it when, when uh, bully table next goth. Next pack some plug. You'll see another uh, big emotional thread. Get Perfect. one eight. Perfect. And I went ahead and dropped the link to twitch.tv table golf, but you can also follow them on YouTube and everything like that. Before we raid into Booty Mashup uh, for some music and things of that nature, uh, you can find me at uh, Thirst Trap Moth on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me, or don't. I don't fucking care. Go ahead and follow us here on Twitch, and go ahead and hit up our YouTube where you will find this interview and other interviews in this series. And I just want to say, uh, this whole season, I wish that Derek could have been here for this last uh, interview, but things, you know, kind of kind of work out. Uh, how they do um, and and I know uh, at PAX Unplugged you two will finally be able to meet and duke it out uh, in the middle of the Philadelphia Convention Center I cannot wait to see one of you take a spine buster through the level up dice table uh, that they have the booth that they have set up there it's going to be fantastic um, go ahead and you know hit us up on Patreon to support us directly Discord go ahead and uh, if you have any spare money we are uh, $10 away from the magic number of six hundred and ninety dollars left, uh, and we're also, you know, three hundred and twenty dollars away from our thousand dollar first goal for Trans Lifeline. So go ahead, if you got anything, go ahead and consider donating to Trans Lifeline here uh, to help out those that are in need, especially trans people that are in crisis and those that are in the LGBTQIA plus community. They deal with uh, micro grants. They deal with having resources on hand and uh, having crisis center available for those that are in need that uh, need to uh, be talked down. A little bit. So go ahead and hit them up. It's a great, great, great 
great benefit. Bully, there's one question that I forgot to ask, and I'm seeing it here on my notes because I got kind of got caught up in the Manchester Orchestra Say Anything conversation. Um, your handle is table underscore goth, uh, and there's somebody else on Twitter that has the handle at table goth. Uh, what yeah. words do you have to this person? Uh he got me. He got me again. I know it's Vin Vox who has it. I know they they, they stole it before I did. And uh, please give it back. I u- I need it more. I use it more. Um, my own mantra of likability doesn't even know how to tag uh, our channel because of it. Please, we got to get rid of the underscore. Please, absolutely. Um, the only time I've ever seen this this man grovel on his knees in front of somebody for a uh, Twitter handle. So it must be important. Um, Excellent, excellent. Well, that is all the time that we have for this evening. We are going to be going ahead and raiding on over uh, because it's pretty late. So we're going to be raiding on over to Booty Mashup. So we're going to listen to some music there. Uh, I think they're currently listening to Lowrider mixed with WAP. So uh, go ahead and enjoy that. That's going to be very interesting. Um, But until then, I want to keep in mind, it is Pride Month. So support queer content creators that are out there. Do not give your money to big uh, corporations that are merely utilizing pride <laughs> as a way to uh, fund uh, right-wing uh, conservative uh, things that put LGBTQIA plus people in harm directly. I'm talking about Chick-fil-A. I'm talking about Walmart. I'm talking about Target. I'm talking about Home Depot. I am talking about all these other places. Find alternatives to give your money to this pride. Uh, also, go ahead and support people in the black and brown community and the Latin community. Stop Asian American hate. And also, please, for the love of God, please, 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 please be kind to one another. Be patient with one another. And honestly, stop deifying people that have double the digits that you have on your Twitter following. Because I guarantee you, they do not know more than you just because more people listen to them. They just got lucky and speaking of getting lucky i hope you have a great rest of your weekend i hope you have a great rest of your night do not forget we are back tomorrow at 12 p.m pacific 1 p.m eastern uh 12 p.m central for the xbox and bethesda showcase we're going to be seeing what new games they have i guess it's going to be skyrim next gen uh is going to be made available again who knows maybe hideo kojima might show up there's rumors i don't know come find out with us and we have karen covered news next uh and if you have somebody that you want to see me interview on this show or if you want to be interviewed on this show then please reach out i already have a running list of people that have already reached out but honestly if you want to see me reach out to somebody to interview them let me know it doesn't matter who they are. If they're a wrestler, if they're a singer, if they have created dope content in the TTRPG sphere or video game design, it doesn't hurt me by asking if somebody wants to be interviewed. So let me know. And have I'm them join. I'm calling out Duval. I'm calling out Nordine. I'm calling out Lonzo. Okay. I want to okay. know more about all these people. All right. All right. I'll put them in the hot seat too. I'll put them in the hot seat too. Well, that's all for us. I hope you have a great, great rest of your night. Enjoy yourself. Go play the quarry or something. Have a good time. And uh, we will talk to you later. Do not forget, comfort comes soon.